to COVID-19 now, we are seeing an increase in hospitalizations. In fact, looking at some of the numbers, almost 12% climb just in the last week, and this is in the middle of this sixth wave. So where are we? Will things get better? Will things get worse? A lot of questions here. Joining me now, Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kieran Moore. Good morning to you. Oh, good morning, Mel. Uh, I want to begin at where we are right now in this wave. Uh, the numbers are showing that we have peaked. Um, are you seeing that exact same data? Where do we go from here? Yeah, we may have peaked in the in the wastewater signal uh, and in total number of cases last week. Uh, but uh, there's a ripple effect uh, as the virus makes its way through the community. Uh, we anticipate hospitalizations and uh, people having to be in the intensive care unit peaking in the, in the next week as well. Uh, and thank all of our healthcare workers that continue to take care of these individuals. Uh, so we have our, another rough week ahead of us, uh, monitoring the situation closely on a day-by-day -day basis. Can never underestimate this virus. So I, I ask all Ontarians to remain cautious because uh, this virus is in in all of our communities. When we look at the hospitalizations and hearing from a number of our health professionals who are on the front line, it's frustrating. Um, you know, if we were to go back and hindsight, but if we were to go back to just after March break and when some of the mask mandate was lifted in various settings, including schools, knowing what we know now and looking at the numbers and seeing that ripple effect, would you have recommended lifting it? I, I wouldn't go back um, because children aren't the individuals that are causing the increase in hospitalization. It continues to be our elder members of our community. So the key message to those individuals is please come forward, uh, get your booster dose, either your first booster or your second. So I'm happy to say 75% of Ontarians have gotten their, uh, of, that are 50 and over, have gotten their first booster. 25% of those that are 80 and older have gotten their second booster. But uh, we all need to stay up to date with our immunization if we're going to be protected against the severe outcomes, which is what all Ontarians uh, want to be protected against. And the vaccines are our biggest and best uh, response uh, to, to that threat of hospitalization. So please come forward, uh, know if you're eligible for your first or second booster. As well, I'm happy to say over 8,000 doses of publicly funded treatments for uh, outpatient uh, therapy for, uh, for COVID uh, uh, with a drug called Paxlovid have been dispensed across Ontario through great partnerships with our pharmacies, uh, with our primary care providers. So roughly 570 uh, uh, treatments a day are getting prescribed. So uh, stay up to date with your vaccinations as well. Know if you're eligible for this outpatient therapy because it too can prevent uh, you from being hospitalized. It can stop the virus from um, uh, getting into your cells uh, and keep you out of hospital. Uh, and we've got plenty of, of that treatment available across Ontario. So two great uh, options for Ontarians. Stay up to date with your vaccines. Please also know if you're eligible for Paxlovid. And uh, we'll be also releasing a, 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 a Another uh, tool in our toolbox called Evusheld, which will be a treatment uh, to pre-protect uh, uh, individuals. Uh, and, and this uh, medication can be injected and prevent uh, for over six months uh, someone coming down with uh, severe COVID. Uh, and particularly that will be uh, made available to those that are uh, transplant patients uh, and or those with uh, blood cancers. So uh, that treatment should be available this week in Ontario as well. This week, where will it be made available, Dr. Moore? It'll be made available through most of the transplant centers as well as cancer centers. So all of that detail is getting worked out this week. We're, we're working with our federal partners to ensure we get the, uh, the product shipped to Ontario and then dispensed uh, across the high risk uh, centers like transplant centers and cancer centers. I just wanna go backward, uh, Dr. Moore, to clarify uh, what you were noting there. I, I mentioned the school setting and then the, the masking being removed, but of course we have a number of adults in those school settings. and. Is it not fair to say that some of the spread might have potentially come from schools to spread to some family members and then throughout the community? So uh, you're, you're uh, clearly um, uh, saying that we, we need uh, to continue the layers of protection. So I ask every parent and child to screen every day uh, to make use of the RAT test. So we're dispensing around 16 million tests every week across Ontario. Uh, those are very important tools. Stay up to date with your immunizations. We continue to provide masks uh, in schools. So high grade masks for students as well as N, a non fitted but N95 masks to all workers in that environment. We absolutely are mask friendly uh, and support 
support those that want to wear masks in that environment. And I absolutely encourage individuals to continue to wear masks. We're not through this yet. Uh, uh, just we're past having a, a legally mandate uh, for, for those settings. Uh, we do, though, uh, have mandates for the highest risk settings, like our long-term care facilities, our retirement homes, our treatment centers, any clinical intervention or interface with a health care provider, uh, you, you must be masked, as well as on public transit. So we are maintaining masking uh, as well. Uh, if you're, uh, you've recovered from COVID day six to day 10, that you should uh, continue to be masked, as well if you're a high-risk contact, you should be masked. So we're embracing masking uh, as a prevention strategy uh, for all of those environments, especially those that are high-risk. Um, Dr. Moore, we've run out of time, but I, I do want to get your take on this. Uh, new Canadian modeling research has come out, and it's suggesting those who are unvaccinated against COVID-19 um, are putting themselves at a greater risk of infecting those who are vaccinated. I'm sure you've looked at some of this research. Uh, before we let you go, I, I want to get your take on what this all means and how you interpret all of it. Well, I would say uh, I'm, I'm not aware of the details of that study, but uh, unvaccinated, it would make sense that they could shed more virus for a longer period of time and be more infectious. That makes sense to me um, uh, and absolutely want uh, uh, that 8% of our population to come forward uh, uh, to be vaccinated and or to know that you're also eligible for treatments now that can uh, decrease the amount of virus in your system and prevent you from being hospitalized. So two good interventions that we need all Ontarians to be aware of. Okay, Dr. Kieran Moore, I appreciate you taking the time with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Mel.